Dear friends of the Tom Photo channel and dear new viewers, today I'm out in the woods. This is one of my favorite places for hiking and biking and also photography. And my goal today is to find out what camera setup gives me the most stable video or video with least amount of shaking. For this I've prepared six different camera setups for you. And I'm going to be walking the same short trail six times, once with each setup, to see which one of them works the best. So after this I'm going home, downloading the videos, taking a closer look at the videos and deciding. And the first camera setup today is my trusty Fuji X-T30. This is actually my preferred video camera. And I'm going to be using compensation of uh, uh, minus two-thirds. Let me see the video settings are uh, just a standard film simulation. ISO is going to be auto. Uh, shutter speed is going to be auto and also the aperture is going to be auto. And let's make sure that I turn the optical image stabilization off. Let's see what this does to video stability. This is now the X-T30. Uh, no image stabilization whatsoever. I'm holding the camera with uh, two hands. And I forgot to say previously that I'm using manual focusing. And the focusing distance is about 10 meters from the camera currently. So you can already see that it's very, very hard to stabilize this image. The video is jumping left and right. Okay. We made it to the finish line. Now for the second camera setup. I'm going to use the same X-T30, but this time the optical image stabilization is going to be turned on. Like so. Let's see how that performs. Alright, same everything as before. But this time the optical image stabilization is turned on. I can see that this is so much better. I'm still holding the camera with two hands. And this is the finish line. Here are the X-T30 videos with and without lens optical image stabilization. I think it's obvious that the image stabilization helps quite visibly. Both videos are pretty shaky because I'm walking, but the one with no image stabilization is really bad. So my third camera setup is this old-fashioned gimbal. Nothing high-tech here. And I will attach my X-T30 to this gimbal. And now I'm walking with the old-fashioned gimbal, so obviously I'm holding the camera with uh, just one hand. I'm seeing a lot of swinging motion from left to right. So at least for me, it doesn't look like the old-fashioned gimbal is working very well. And we still have to make it to the finish line. Almost there. And my last camera setup today is a state-of-the-art gimbal from Shenyun. I hope this is how it's pronounced. It's a very good gimbal, and I'll have more videos on it. You see how stable the camera is? It doesn't matter how I move my hand, the camera remains very stable. This has got to be the best way to make a video. I wonder if it's gonna beat GoPro. Alright, and now I'm walking with the state-of-the-art gimbal. It's very easy to operate. I wonder if it's going to be better or worse than GoPro. And this is our finish line. Here we have a comparison between the simplest and the sophisticated gimbal with three motors. The simple gimbal is not working at all in my hands. Chances are good that in your hand it will work better. So it might be me. The Shinyun gimbal is stable like a rock. And my last two setups today 
are gonna be the GoPro. It's a GoPro 10 Black Hero, and it's a wonderful little machine. It can do so much. We're gonna be testing it with two different settings. Uh, one is called Narrow, it's the standard view. And then we also have something called uh, Linear with Horizon Leveling. It's supposed to be super stable. And all the other stability settings of this camera are currently set at the maximal value. So it's supposed to be super stable. Let's go take a look. Now this is GoPro with a narrow view. It should shake a little bit from left to right, but otherwise I think it already looks really, really good. This is GoPro with horizon leveling. It's a little bit wider view, but it's super stable. I think this is gonna be the winner. It's not gonna have video quality quite comparable to, to the X-T30, but it's super stable. Comparing the GoPro's narrow view and linear with horizon leveling, shows that the latter is more stable as it's supposed to be. It does not rock from left to right. The horizon is always perfectly level. This feature of GoPro is actually quite amazing. The two winners that emerged were X-T30 with Xinyan and GoPro with horizon leveling. The winner is difficult to call. Whenever possible, I like to measure things instead of eyeballing and guessing. The trick here is in comparing different cameras, resolutions and lenses. Therefore, we need something that can deal with this variance. So I'm proposing a method for measuring image stability in videos. Probably I'm not the first one to invent it. I don't know if it's been done before, but this is how I do it. To compare two videos, I randomly extract the same number of frames from each video. Then I measure the sharpness of these frames using a method listed in the box under the video. This will give me a single number for each frame. I divide all values with the largest value of the series, simply because I'd like all numbers to be under one and the best frame of each video set up to equal exactly one. I'm now going to assume that the sharpest image of the series is perfectly sharp and the least sharp is as non-sharp as an image can be. This means that all others are in between and we can now see how many of those in between cases each video setup generates. To visualize that, we sort all sharpness values from most sharp to least sharp and put these numbers on a graph. When we do this for our top contestants, Fuji with the modern gimbal and GoPro with horizon leveling, we get these lines. The top line corresponds to better video and that is Fuji X-T30 with the Xinyan gimbal. It is above the GoPro with horizon leveling line. The differences are the greatest at the end, meaning that the differences between the worst frames are the greatest. So based on this, I have to give the first prize to X-T30 and Xinyan. It beat GoPro, and that's a major surprise to me. But wait, you say, how do you know this method really works? A good experiment needs a control. And I agree. So let's use the clearly most terrible video as a control. This is the X-T30 without a gimbal and without the image stabilization. This is an awful video and it shows up as such on our graph. See how the number of good frames is very small and the line is so clearly below the other lines. We could think of all kinds of other tests too. For example, I should repeat these experiments and do everything three times so that we could start applying statistics. But this video has been long enough. If you want me to do more tests, please suggest them in the comments down below. Thanks so much for sticking around and walking in the woods with me. Um, if you consider subscribing to my channel, that would energize me to come up with more and more video ideas. I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day. Bye.